When we encounter planes and lines together in the field, for example silicon lines in a fault plane or a mineral elongation in a foliation, we can measure these lines as a single number, rake. This is useful because not only does it reduce the complexity of what I have to measure by a whole number, but I don't have to deal with uncertainty of measuring trend and plunge and having to, and having to deal with correcting it so it actually lies on my plane. I'm guaranteed that the line will plot along the great circle of the plane on the stereo net. I think rake is best understood backwards, so here's a plane. One seven five fifty two. So let's plot that first. So here's one eighty, there's one seventy, two, four, five. It's one seventy five. I'm using right hand rule, so if that's my strike, then this should be my dip direction. I'll count in fifty two from there. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty two. I'll draw out that great circle. Okay, as I said, rake I think is easier is best understood when working backwards. So let's just put a random point here on the plane. Right there. Okay, so I have a line on the plane. You can visualize this by there's a plane that's coming in and intersecting my sphere, uh, my hemisphere about like so, and it has a line on it oriented about like that on that surface. Okay. So let's measure a rake. Okay. So to measure rake, I'm just going to move my plane so its strike is at the north and south poles. And I can just count from strike 10, 20, 30, 32, 34 degrees to my rake. So my plane, and add to it like that, my rake is a rake of 34 degrees. But the 34 degrees isn't enough. For example, strike is here and strike is also there. Did I measure 34 degrees down this way? Or did I measure 34 degrees up this way? Because those are two very different lines. So I'm going to record that this strike is closer to the northward direction, so I'll write down 34 north. One common mistake to make with rake is to record the trend or the quadrant in which your uh, the line occurs. Well, say for example if my line was down in this quadrant, okay, if I had a rake in here. Well, imagine if I recorded 34 southwest. Well, how do I count that? Because that's not in the southwest quadrant and that's not in the southwest quadrant, so which strike direction do I measure from? So you want to make sure you record a, an appropriate strike direction for your rake. Okay, so we've measured so now we've measured a rake. So let's talk about what a rake is. This line is not a rake. Say this is a fault plane, and this is a slicken line. That represents a slicken line. Rake is this angle, not that point. And, it, and also important to notice is that it's not an angle measured along a vertical plane, so it's not a line that I measure straight in from the edge to the center, and it's not a direction, so it doesn't lie in the horizontal plane either. It's an angle in a tilted plane, and it's measured from strike down to the line, like this, 10, 20, 30, 4. Okay. Let's also go ahead and write down uh, a new line. So let's say that this line uh, has a rake of, let's do 45 from the southward strike. 
Let's label this as A and this one as B. Okay. So remember, I'll move strike to north and south. And I'll start at the southward strike, because that's where I said to begin, and I'll count up 45 degrees. 10, 20, 30, 45. And there's line B, lying within the plane. What about line C, which has a rake of zero? Or, or line D, which has a rake of 90? Well, C is going to plot here, at strike. So notice that a line with a rake of zero is parallel to strike. How about the 90 degrees? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So there is line D. Well, check this out. So if here's strike, this is your dip direction. So your line with a rake of 90 is parallel to your dip direction and its plunge is the same angle as the dip of your plane. The plane has a dip of 52, and line D has a plunge of 10, 20, 30, 40, 52. So that's a fairly useful relationship to keep in mind, and you have two end members to work with. Rake of 0 is parallel to strike. Rake of 90 is parallel to dip.